Welcome to the family! Hey guys, this is McGann, finally doing another health and fitness update. So I'm going to give you my honest feedback on Weight Watchers and Noom today. And both of those I do have an active account for right now. I've done Weight Watchers three different times, the first time for six months, then for four months with my husband. And I did lose some weight, but I found the program overall to be not very motivating for me. And I am using just the app only because not only is the in-person program more expensive, but they really do not have good opportunities for people in my area. It's basically if you have kids or you work, you can't make it to any of the meetings. And then this last time I signed up for Weight Watchers because my friend talked me into doing it again with her. So I signed up for this nine month long commitment to get some special deal and my bestie dropped out like after the first week. So... And I'm gonna spoil this review up front. I 100% pick Noom over the Weight Watchers app and I'll explain that in more detail, but I do have an affiliate link for a Noom trial in the description below. So if you do decide to give Noom a try, I would really appreciate it if you use that link. But the basics of the Weight Watchers app is that you log what you eat and everything is assigned a certain number of points. Let's see, I'm in activity right now. Let me go over to food. And I have already eaten plentifully today. But yeah, let's see. I am in the purple plan and in purple, a lot of fruits and vegetables and grilled chicken, things like that are zero points. So it kind of encourages you and pushes you to eat those sorts of things. But, you know, I have three young kids. So when they say, mommy, 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 I really want to go to McDonald's. I'm going to end up going to McDonald's and guess what they've gotten rid of since all the quarantine stuff happened? The grilled chicken sandwich, which was one of the healthiest things on their menu. But like myself, I have, I think, 32, 33 points a day. Let me switch over to a different day. Yeah, I have 32 points in a day and that's based off of my weight, basically. And even though the idea of like, oh, well, all these zero point foods, that gives me so many options of things I can pick and eat, it can become really difficult when you hit the winter months, like we're just coming out of now, and zero point fruits are extremely expensive. I think I just saw watermelons pop back up in the store and they were like $9 a piece. And even if I just want to have something that's not very filling, but it's something that I can make quick quickly for lunch, like one ham sandwich with no condiments, that ends up taking about a third of my daily points to have one sandwich. And the thing I really don't like about Weight Watchers is that the more you lose weight, the less daily points you have. So if you work yourself into a groove, like I'm going to eat really healthy all day. And then at dinner, my kids are going to be around, you know, it's a day that we have to go out for sports or scouts or something. So we're going to pick up fast food. And so then I have enough points left over. Even if I go a little bit over budget, I'll still get that purple dot like I have on Monday here. And so I can kind of afford to eat out with my Weight Watchers budget. But the problem is after you start doing well enough, and they tick those points away, it is harder and harder to make things like that happen. And I just hate that. And I get that they're trying to keep you from hitting a plateau so that you don't stop losing weight. But I also have a life that I'm trying to live here. So once I lose so many points, it's really not a realistic program for me anymore. Then there's the bonus points here on the left side. It says 52 weekly remaining. And every week you get this whole new set. Let's see if I start on Friday. For me, I don't know if it's the same for everybody, but I get 42 points to start out with. And then if I don't use all of my points in a day, then I get so many rollover points. And I've done it before where I've eaten maybe 18 points worth of food thinking, oh, I'll roll all that over and then have cheesecake at the end of the week. No, it cuts you off after so many points. It's either five or eight, something like that. Now these 42 bonus points sound really good in theory, right? The problem is psychologically, they kind of mess with me because your points, you get a purple dot if you eat within what they consider a healthy range of points. So if you eat too many points or you don't use enough points, you have a white mark instead of a purple. And you can see there are weeks where I have uh, been more diligent than others. And again, that's just because I'm kind of fed up with Weight Watchers at this point and I'm just counting down the days till it's done. Okay, those 42 points sound really good in theory, but if you use more than I think seven of those extra 
100 points in a day, you lose your purple dot on your calendar, which means you didn't have a good or healthy day. My preference would be to not have overage points and to just already have those extra points partitioned out into my daily points so that I don't feel like I'm starving all the time. The thing with the Weight Watchers app that I really don't like is that there's just no real help if you're having cravings or you're having issues or, you know, maybe you just aren't a fruit and vegetable person. Those are not habits that are just automatic for everybody. So if you're not already on a consistent diet plan and you're not already living a healthy lifestyle, going onto the Weight Watchers app is like being a fish bought at the store and just dumped into a new tank. You're going to go into shock and you're probably not going to survive. But for me, the more I feel hungry, the less and less I end up earning my purple dot and then the less and less I feel motivated. Or I start to feel kind of shamed by the app so I don't report everything to it and now I'm not even being accountable to myself because these little purple dots are making me feel like garbage. And that's not helpful to weight loss. Now the activity side of things on the app can be pretty stress-free if you have a Fitbit or similar device connected to the app. Then it just automatically tracks everything through your Fitbit app. Like I don't have to do anything. I got 13 points on Sunday for, let's see, 10 points for a 32 minute walk and then another three points for my normal Fitbit count steps. So I don't have to do anything to get those points. I like that it auto syncs and then, you know, I'm earning points on Weight Watchers for doing what I'm already doing. Now you can go in, you can look for certain activities and go walk the dog. I mean, they've got some really <laughs> specific ones in here. Yeah, walking the dog and you can put in your specific date and time and that's a fine option if that's what you want to do, but it just feels like there's so many menus and kind of ways to go through things. The Weight Watchers app has actually changed a lot since I first joined in 2019 and I do not find the newest form to be very uh, user friendly. It's, it's okay, but it is not as intuitive as it used to be and there are some things I still haven't figured out how to do. And I have done videos about Weight Watchers before and some of the issues that I've had with them, they have fixed. Like before, you had to go to in-person meetings to get the little weight loss tokens when you lost, I think they go in five pounds, 10 pounds, 25 five pounds, 50 pounds, and 100 pounds that you've lost. And I like those. I find those to be really motivating. And they've only recently started giving those to the people on the app too. So that's a plus. I do like that they fixed that. They've also made it to where, let's see if I can figure out how to get in there now that it's not as user intuitive as it used to be. They also still have features where you can follow people and you can put up a little like Facebook kind of posts with pictures. So they do have things in here that are kind of community based, but it just isn't very strong in my opinion. It's kind of like just another social media platform that you have to deal with all the time. And they have groups too, but let's see, where are, oh, there's my settings, deep. They also have it now where you can go into your settings, go into food settings, and you can actually change if you are on the green, blue, or purple. I thought it was on purple. Okay, I'm on blue. And the programs are all a little bit different. I think with the purple, it has 300 or something zero point foods, so that's nice. But you also get a really, really small daily point budget. So if you're not just eating zero point foods, you're kind of screwed. And there's almost no chance you're going to eat out with that. With the green, I believe that is where everybody is set to the exact same amount of points and you still lose points. But even like an apple, instead of that being a zero point food, it's like two points. So then you have more points on green, but then everything you eat has points. So it, they're all a little bit give and takey, but I do like that you can pick and try different ones. And I also like like that you can come on baby the wellness wins this is something that they had before but you earn points for tracking your food let's see you get uh, 10 bonus points for tracking three breakfasts in a row which it has to be on the day that you eat the breakfast if you go back in and log your stuff later you don't get the extra credit but yeah you get five points for breakfast five for lunch five for dinner five for your activity but you can also get more like I did for you know doing the walks and stuff you get 25 points for weighing in but you can only do that once a week and then you can do five points for sleep. I tried to set it up for my Fitbit to do that but it doesn't seem like it's connecting with that but as far as all that goes you can go through when you have your points and kind of pick different things. They are not all the same kind of value level though so uh. and they do a mix of physical things from Weight Watchers and different kind of things that are sort of oh here's a subscription to this service things like that. So not all things are really well balanced for the amount of points that they uh, charge you
you for it. Like there's a $15 credit. Okay, but if you're not going to use the Weight Watcher store, it doesn't really matter. Three pack of metal straws. If that's something up your alley, great. You know, flip wallet, a uh, keychain for your charms. I do need to get one of those charm keychains. I really like them. Shoe bags for when you do, you know, work out and fancy shoe switch outs. And I remember when I did my last subscription, there was nothing physical I could get for the amount of points I had. And I had a decent amount, like maybe three, 4,000 points, but they ran out of everything physical. So I ended up getting like a month trial to some mental health thing. And I wasn't really happy with it. So yeah, just keep in mind that not everything is always available. Not everything is equally worth the points. But I do have my eye on one of these Bluetooth speakers and I know I could probably buy one in the store for $10, but I'd rather have something physical than something like, oh, here's a $50 gift card to flex it. But it just depends on, you know, what you like, what you want. But I'm also very aware that this app is like $22 a month, which doesn't sound bad, but you really don't get a lot out of it for what's programmed in. It. It's basically an app that's a logbook. So the points, they're nice. I like being able to get something back, but I'm very aware that much like Chuck E. Cheese, I'm paying a lot more for the points than I'm getting back on the merchandise. So yeah, just you know, keep that in mind, something to think about. But overall, I am very aware that for the price of the app, I am not getting any community. I'm not getting any real coaching. And I have reached out before and the coach that responds honestly sounds like a bot. So I was not really thrilled with that. But really, I think the most unforgivable thing for me with Weight Watchers is that there's not a lot of help for you to break bad habits or to change your food cravings or food addictions. And that makes this a really hard program to sustain over time. So very honestly, if you struggle to lose weight or have any issues with your motivation going up and down, Weight Watchers is probably not going to work very well for you either. Because as soon as you hit that point where your motivation starts to go down, you're going to get real frustrated with the app and having to account to it all the time really quickly. But now let me go and talk about Noom. Granted, I've only had Noom for about two weeks, but so far I like it so much better than I ever have Weight Watchers. And instead of the sink or swim approach that Weight Watchers kind of has, oh, like they just sent me a message, but instead of the sink or swim approach, Noom asks you a ton of questions about your lifestyle, and then they have a plan that is a lot more tailored for where you are mentally. So let me get into my settings. Yes, okay, so my curriculum is called HW for whatever that means, and you can turn on meal reminders, you can auto or manual set your daily step count, and again, you can connect it to a health app. So if you have like a smart scale or a Fitbit, those can all be connected to Noom as well. And then something else that I think is kind of cool is that they have a weight loss speed. So if you want to do slow and steady like the turtle, that's fine. If you want to go at it like the hair, that's fine. Or you can go at it at cheetah pace like I'm trying right now. And honestly, I didn't think I'd be able to keep up with it turned up to anything past turtle, but I'm actually doing a lot better than I ever Ever would have anticipated. Now, the thing that makes Noom really different is that every day when you log in, you have about 10 to 15 minutes of these little articles. So here was just, I think, a little one page article here. Ever get stuck on focusing on the can'ts, won'ts, buts, and what ifs? Set goals, not limits. So they just do kind of little motivational things and they pepper in a lot of really good information that, at least for me, really gets you thinking differently. Like in school, I was a band kid. So that meant I didn't have to take health and home mac and that kind of thing. And my parents both worked all the time. So basically every evening there was a call of, hey, what place do you want us to stop and get fast food from? And that was my dinner. You know, that was my life. So getting all of these short peppy articles every day that really help you to understand things like nutrition, food triggers, and all of these other things that I was having issues with and not even realizing it. You know, like even on this article I clicked, it talked about thought distortion, which is where you sit there going, oh, well, if I order a salad, everybody's going to think I'm weird. Or, oh, I missed a day at the gym, so there's no point in me doing this anymore. You know, I've already messed up. I've ruined everything. Those are untrue thought distortions that hinder you from meeting your goal. And there have been several times already where I've had a thought like that and gone, wait a minute, this isn't actually a legitimate problem. I'm having a thought distortion. So I've had so many little 
little aha moments like that with Noom already. And another good little nugget that really changed my thought process was how your body can't tell the difference between a pound of greasy ground beef and a pound of salad. Honestly, I am in my 30s and I'm just clueless about this kind of stuff. And so every day you have different articles. And Friday I had kind of a bad day. We were running around everywhere. So I forgot to read my articles before midnight, but it's okay. Look, they didn't even make me feel bad about that. No articles read. No worries. All missed articles are on your current day. So just on Saturday, they gave me Friday's articles. And yeah, that does put me a day behind. So you can look at that as a negative, but you can also look at that as, hey, I missed a day and the app is not trying to overwhelm me or stress me out or make me feel bad about that. And I like that. And Noom also explains things like fog eating and they gave me different breathing techniques. And it's just been such a different experience that I'm understanding food and myself a lot more than I ever did. So for me, I really need that extra amount of handholding because I don't have, you know, a good control of myself. I have food addictions. I have impulses that I need to learn to break. And trying to do that all cold turkey just is not realistic for me. And I really love that Noom wants me to get comfortable confronting my discomfort. Like, you know, getting on a scale every day or being able to walk through the cookie aisle at the grocery store and not be going crazy. My husband was actually taunting me like that today while we were out grocery shopping. And he goes through the bakery and goes, oh, look at that strawberry shortcake. Oh, look at that chocolate Hershey bread. And I didn't flinch. You know, I wasn't salivating like some Pavlovian dog experiment. And I honestly could not tell you exactly when it happened or what happened to make it happen. But I swear to you, going through these daily courses and trying to stick with Noom has let me start to master my impulses a lot more than I ever could before. It used to be, oh, I see the Hershey bread. Oh my gosh, I really need that Hershey bread. Okay, I'm going to buy it. Now, okay, I'm just going to eat like one piece a day. No, no, no. It's a bakery item. It's going to go bad so fast. Now I've eaten like a whole row of the Hershey bread in an hour and I'm still starving. And today I looked right at it and I had no desire to pick it up and put it in the buggy. Like it wasn't singing to me like it usually does. And I 100% think that that's because they outline plans and give me ideas so that I can handle stuff. Now, of course, I'm not perfect at it. And with Noom's diet plan, I've backed all the way up to the first day that I started. And you might notice something is missing here. On most days, you have this little calorie counter. But on the first day of Noom, there isn't a calorie counter. And if you scroll down, it asks you to log food. So you log your food. And I ate way over what would be reasonable for anybody. But what's cool is when you hit analysis, it will go through and show you if you made green choices, which are the least color caloric dense and or contain the highest concentration of healthy nutrients. I didn't have any green choices that day. You know, I was still sort of getting the hang of things. And that's okay because Noom even tells you, you know, you're going to have days where you're more motivated and less motivated. So the first day, oh my gosh, look at all those chips. I had so many chips and, you know, I didn't even drink that much water. But the first day you just go in, you kind of log stuff, you get familiar with the app and that's that, you know, no trying to to make you fit into a box. No trying to make you feel bad that you didn't hit your point quota. And the yellow category is foods that have more calories and less healthy nutrients. So it's not as good as a green food, but it's okay that you eat some in a day. And I like that they acknowledge that you should have some calories from every section. Then you have the red category, which you want to be really cautious and aware of. And of course, the unhealthy things like great value cookies and cream ice cream and Lay's barbecue chips but the red foods are the most calorie dense and they have the least healthy nutrients. And so it's kind of like a lot of red meats. There's nuts, obviously junk food, which seems to be a staple for me. But after logging for this first day, I was kind of like, okay. Then the second day when the calorie counter showed up, I kind of felt like, look at that. I've gone 180 calories over budget. How could I? But cheeses and flour tortillas that are in the red, that took me way over budget. But still, I mean, if you compare to the 20, 25,000 calories I ate the first day, eating only 1,500 calories on my second day, that's a thousand less calories. So already because of the program, I'm starting to think about things differently. But what I also think is really, really, really cool about how 
Noom does things. So I ate 28,000 calories that day, which is crazy. I think even if you turn around the back of a Doritos bag, it says 2,200 in a day is what a normal human should have, is what a normal human should have. But you know what? The app didn't make me feel bad. It didn't shame me. It didn't say, oh my gosh, are you sure you want to eat that? Or, oh, we're going to take away something from you and make it a negative reinforcement. But all it did was show me this bar and here's where I am way over here in 2835 calories in the day. And here's where I missed the mark about halfway back in the good section. But again, Noom acknowledges that you're going to go out sometimes and you're going to have a bad day and you're going to, you know, go way over your calorie budget sometimes. But it's about keeping the bigger picture in mind. But see, then the next day I only went 80 calories over. And then the day after that, I actually was under by 190 calories. And there has been no point on Noom where I have felt hungry or starving. And that has not ever been the case with Weight Watchers. So, oh yeah, that was the day I did the Noom recipe for a smoothie. I'll show you guys that soon. And then let's see, the orange juice put me a little bit over. I even went to Bob Evans, but I kind of thought about what I was going to eat and what I ate before and after that. And it all worked out pretty well. I mean, I still went over in yellow and red and didn't have as much green, but I stayed pretty intently in my calorie intake allotment. So I, I think that that's something to celebrate. You know, that's a good job on my part. With Weight Watchers, it's been such a different thing. I feel like I waste all of my points by midday and then I'm starving for the rest of the day. But somehow, and I still can't pinpoint how, unless it's been just psychologically through these articles, I have not been fog eating or storm eating or just, you know, mindlessly eating all the time like I normally do. And there are some days, yeah, 61 calories that I went over here. Then I did good on Saturday. I did good on Sunday. I even went under. I should have eaten a tiny bit more, it looks like, on uh, today. Oh, no, that's today. I can still eat more today. Let's see, where am I today? I could use some more greens, but okay, we will try to find something yellow to eat. And again, all I did was go to McDonald's with my son for lunch. Now, the only thing I will say I have really not been fully happy with on the new app is that you have to think ahead and log what you want to eat to see what it is. Like there's no easy cheat sheet that I've found so far. I can create a dish. I can scan food, which is great when I'm at home. But if I am standing at the kiosk trying to order at McDonald's, that's not helpful. So let's say, okay, like McDonald's cheeseburger. Oh, that's a red food. You can see that in the top left corner. And then you can see, okay, if you have one burger, that's 600 calories. Two is 1200 calories. But I'm kind of still trying to get in a good place to where I log and plan out what I'm going to eat before I get there. Because again, when you're at the kiosk and you have that craving like, oh yes, I want one of those salty cheeseburgers. It's harder to say no if you don't already have a plan in mind. But another cool thing is that if you click on more and you go to portion size. And if something is described as a bowl plate, that is about two of your fists. And then a tablespoon is your whole thumb. A teaspoon is the top part of your thumb. Three ounces of fish would be about the size of a dollar bill. And three ounces of most other meat looks like a deck of playing cards. So I think that's so helpful, but I think that they could use this to be more expanded. Like there are some weird ones in here and I don't understand why they measure them that way. Let's see if I can pull one up. Crap. American cheese singles. Okay, for some reason, even though these are already pre-cut cheese slices, they measure them by the cup. And I looked and a Kraft Singles American cheese slice is, I think it was 90 calories. So that can be really difficult to do, but if you actually swipe this over, you can set it by calories. So if it is for some reason set to a really weird unit of measurement, like a cup of sliced cheese, you can go over to calories and then just put that straight in. Because even if you go into the portion size, it's still the same guide on every piece of food. I really wish that new had a good cheat sheet for the red food, the yellow food, and the green food on the app. But if it's there, I have not found it. And I will go in and show you recipes. These russet oven fries are really good. Let's see, where's the one? Slimming fruit smoothie. That's the one I made and it has the instructions and the ingredients right there in it. It was really quick and simple to do and it was really pretty good. And I'm not a smoothie person, but just being willing to sort of modify your tastes a little bit has gone a really long 
own way for me. And what I think is the most important thing about Noom is that it does recognize and give you red foods every day. So, you know, if I'm on Weight Watchers and I have too many cupcakes, it might tell me that, hey, that's half your points for the day. So I'm more inclined to get frustrated and quit with that kind of mentality that, no, 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 you just can't have that. You know, if you don't want to starve, you don't get the treats. And on Noom, yeah, you have to do some tweaks. Like instead of buying a full-size ice cream sandwich, maybe you just get the mini ones instead. And then you can have one of those every day and it doesn't really derail any of your progress or your points or anything. Now I will say that Noom's approach is to have you cut way down on the normal calorie intake. A normal person should have 2,000 to 2,200 calories a day. So Noom giving you like 1,200, 1,300 a day is a huge cut. So when you cut yourself off from food like that, your body can actually hang on to fat harder because it thinks you're starving. But if you stick with it, then eventually your body is going to adapt and go, oh, okay, this is just something different now, and then start letting the fat go. And having that really low calorie limit also means that if I go over my budget, which I have frequently, as I've showed you, that doesn't mean that my weight loss goals are ruined if I go over that allotment. You know, I have three kids, they want to eat out a lot, and I'm just not in the headspace yet to walk into McDonald's and order a salad. Maybe one day I'll be that person, but she and I haven't met yet. So I do end up going hundreds of calories over on those days. Although today I think I'm going to do my first time eating out and not going over, so yay me! But most of the time, even if I do go over my limit, I still end up being way below the 2,000 calorie a day mark. So in my head at least, I'm still ahead of the game even when I go over. And again, the app doesn't make me feel bad or shame me or anything if I do go over. It's just like, hey, here's a way to keep track of your own progress. And somewhere coming up soon, I'm supposed to have like a personal coach that'll be working with me in the new map and some whole community of people who are also doing the Noom program. So I'm excited for that because I think it's really going to motivate me to have that support system kind of on demand. Like I showed you before, Weight Watchers has something similar where they have groups and kind of a Facebook wall on your profile. But so many people join and quit that I never really found any community there. Now, on the con side of Noom, I will say that it uh, only works on your phone. You can get it to work on your tablet, but then there's features that don't work or don't work right. Weight Watchers, on the other hand, you can get on a desktop and plug in what you ate or whatever, and it will work on the desktop. So I, I do like that better about Weight Watchers. I like the more flexible options. But if you are willing to just go all in on the app, I think the Noom app overall is way better. Then price-wise, Noom is like like $65 a month, but the price does go down exponentially if you pay for a longer term up front. I think it's $100 for two months and then the price keeps dropping from there, maybe $180 for like a six to eight month stretch. So Noom is definitely more expensive than Weight Watchers, but I feel like Noom gets me more than Weight Watchers ever did. Weight Watchers is really designed to be a meeting where you're kind of fat shamed in a group if you didn't lose the those pounds. Noom, to me, feels more like it wants to be your friend who actually helps you. And also, I want to do full disclosure here. I do have an affiliate link for Noom, and that's because they let me into their affiliate program and gave me an eight-month free trial. But I want to be really candid that you guys believing what I have to tell you is more important to me than the, like, $10 or whatever it is that Noom kicks my way if you sign up with my link. I mean, money's nice, I won't lie, that's why it takes sponsorships, but I don't expect everyone to purchase everything that I've ever recommended and my inbox is filled with hundreds of businesses every week and they are all asking me to promote their stuff. I turn away about 99% of them. If I don't like the product, I'm not going to recommend it or do a video about it and I don't care if they paid me. I'll give that money back, but I'm not going to praise something if I find it to be total junk. So can I guarantee to you that Noom is going to be some weight loss magic for you? Um, no, because because no matter what, you are still going to be the one who has to put in the work. And everyone has a different body. They have different schedules. They have different things that work for them. So not every weight loss program is going to work for every person because it's not one size fits all. But if you're like me and you just kind of flounder with dieting and understanding or controlling your food impulses, I will say that I have found Noom to be very beneficial to my mental 
health, about food, and weight loss. So if that sounds like a similar story to yours, I'd say do the trial. They let you give Noom a try for a pretty low fee. It's not completely free, but it's pretty cheap. You get to pick the actual price you're comfortable with, and then you can decide from there if that clicks with you too. And yeah, again, I will say that I have an affiliate link in the description below, and I would appreciate if you used it, but if not, I still appreciate you hanging out and listening to what I have to say today. So take it for what you will, but thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Before you go, if you enjoyed, don't forget to follow us and look for more of our content. And if you're really dedicated, there's a link to sign up for our newsletter in the description below so that you'll stay in the loop for future videos and projects. Also, please check out The Fangirl, where I talk about all kinds of movies, shows, and even games and comics. Well, that's about it, so see you next time, family members!